Hello everyone, and welcome to the second part of Alyeska's Insider's Guide. If you haven't already, go watch part 6a about the Lower Mountain. It'll give valuable context for a lot of this video. With that, let's begin part b of an Insider's Guide to Ski Resorts, Alyeska. Now, the most popular terrain at Alyeska is this upper bowl terrain, served by the Glacier Bowl Express High Speed Quad. The bowl has two outer edge runs and a bunch of runs that go down into the middle of the bowl. A lot of the acreage within the bowl is technically a named run, but because it is ungroomed, it is more of off-piste skiing than anything. Because Alyeska gets so much snow, a lot of times the off-piste stuff is great powder turns, but if you notice nobody's going off of the grooming, you shouldn't either. This was discussed in part A. With that, let's go trail by trail. The two edges of the bowl are these two blues, Mighty Might and Silvertip. Both are nice groomers. From Silvertip, you can drop into the bowl anywhere, or you can go down at Silvertip Face, here, which is also groomed. Mighty Might takes you over to the top of the tram, which has a few restaurants as well. From there, you can ski down these three blue groomers, Dogleg, South Edge, and Mambo. You can ski down the South Face and Eagle Rock open areas, or you can ski down Main Street into the bowl. The trail map doesn't really do the upper bowl justice. Main Street is a short little road that traverses back, pretty much in the opposite direction of Mighty Might, to reduce the slope of the run, so that it can be a blue. Trapline, while it looks parallel to Mighty Might, actually goes at a near 45 degree angle away from Mighty Might down into the bowl. The run out from the bowl is a series of blue groomers, champagne, and wire. From here, you can access any of the lower mountain, or take runway back to the Glacier Bowl Express for another lap. As far as grooming goes, that's pretty much it. The blues tend to be groomed. The resort does seem to rotate grooming primarily between Trapline and Gales Goalie, so most mornings you'll find in addition to the main blues being groomed, Trapline or Gales Goalie, or sometimes even Prospector, will have been groomed. All of these other blacks, Chilkoot Ridge and White and Black Friday, are just off-piste like skiing. From Silvertip, you can access this Ptarmigan Gully, which is another ungroomed trail that takes you over to the lower bowl. There is also this little trail, Alpine, which comes off of Champagne. It's a little bit of a natural halfpipe. It takes you back to the top of Ted's, and that about wraps it up for the upper bowl. It's no secret that Alieska is a steep mountain. I know someone who once decided not to go skiing at Alieska because the avalanche risk was so high that you were required to carry a beacon. If you plan on skiing any of the exterior terrain, it is highly, highly recommended that you carry a beacon, shovel, and probe. But aside from avalanches, the other thing that comes with a steep mountain that averages over 600 inches of snow each year is incredible extreme terrain. The extreme terrain at Alieska is generally divided into four main areas, the North Face, High Traverse, Tonica, and Headwall. We'll start with the absolute most famous, the North Face. The north face is all of this terrain over to the left of the tram. Ski Patrol highly suggests carrying an avalanche beacon to ski north face. All of this massive terrain area is served by the tram. All of these little purple triangles are the gates. This gate right here is the Chuck's Gate. It serves some of the most popular north face terrain, especially when Ragdoll is closed. I believe there's a gate right next to the left of the tram that's not shown on the map, but don't quote me on that. Otherwise, from the tram, you have to go to this gate to the right. To get to these upper gates, including Chuck's Gate, you have to go down and ride up Glacier Bowl. Then, of course, there are two more gates to the right of the tram to drop in from that angle. All of this terrain is just steep. The upper north face is all open terrain, packed with cliffs, bowls, gullies, and couloirs. There are lots of cool natural features that can be fun. The best, and also some of the craziest runs in all of Alieska are these two chutes, Christmas chute and New Year's chute. The sides are super high, so you can go way up high on the sides for some extra fun. Up above the chutes are the monies, which are even more extreme. The chutes, along with all of this above, including the monies, does require a hike from the top of the Glacier Bowl Express. Therefore, the process for lapping these is tram to Glacier Bowl, then a hike up, and usually a bit of a wait, although you do get to watch everyone else do it while you wait. All of this upper north face stuff drops you down onto Autobahn, which is a groomer, just begging for you to put the pedal down. 
Another part of the North Face terrain is this Spoon Line terrain. You can traverse Spoon Line to get out of the Banjo Lolos area here in order to get back to Glacier Bowl Express for another lap. This right side of the North Face is great skiing on powder days. Even all the way down West Line to the tram instead of lapping it via Glacier Bowl, it's really nice. These two double blacks, North Star to Northwest Passage, are nearly glades, but not quite. Big Dipper is the glade. Now, something about these single black runs that are really just a run out for the North Face. Sometimes there can be too much powder. If you're in these run out runs and there's a foot of powder, you can occasionally get to the point where you get stuck. It's not as easy to do as it is on a run like Ptarmigan Goalie, but I've heard of people managing to do it somehow. The second area for extreme skiing is the High Traverse. Just before the High Traverse, you can hike up a bit to hit the center ridge and Chilkoot Knoll stuff. The High Traverse itself is a little traverse that you can just use your poles to push along if you want, if you ski. If you snowboard, you'll have to walk the High Traverse. The terrain served from High Traverse here is really just an extension of the upper bowl single blacks, open and carvable. Really, the High Traverse doesn't even count as extreme terrain. If you keep going across the High Traverse, you can reach the Max's Traverse track, which gives you access to all of the Tonica extreme terrain. The Tonica extreme terrain also has some natural features, such as small ridges, small chutes, and gullies. This area is not heavily utilized, so there are typically not any moguls or anything. Now, the trail map shows Max's chute, but it's only open for a few days each year, if it opens at all. And when it is open, it requires taking the boot pack up headwall and then traversing all the way across the ridge top. This takes well over an hour, which to me is really not worth it. Now, as just mentioned, there is a pretty brutal boot pack up to the top of headwall. This really weeds out the people who shouldn't be skiing in that area. Oftentimes, you'll find people skiing the north face who really aren't that skilled, which is why headwall can be nice. Headwall is one of few areas in which a beacon is absolutely mandatory, regardless of the avalanche danger. Typically, Ski Patrol has a little tent up on the headwall. They can give you tips on the best lines. Headwall is easily scopable from below, but not so much from up top. If you get too aggressive, you might find yourself getting some unwanted air. Headwall, due to its extreme steepness, is also limited in opening, so get it if it's open. Well, that about wraps it up for Alieska. Thank you all so much for watching, especially if you're new to the channel and you stuck it out all the way until now. Please leave any questions down below. All my love, I'm out.